Okay, folks, today's sponsor of WTF is Audible. Please visit audiblepodcast.com slash WTF pod for a free audiobook download. Do it. Lock the gate! <laughs> Are we doing this? Really? Wait for it. Are we doing this? Wait for it. How? What the fuck? Number WTF. And it's also, eh, what the fuck? What's wrong with me? It's time for WTF. What the fuck? With Mark Marin. Okay, let's do this. How are you, what the fuckers? What the fuck, buddies? What the fuck, Aneers? What the fuck, Nicks? Just got home yesterday from Seattle. Had a great time. Great time in Seattle. Three days up there. Saw some good music shows. But you know what? Honestly, all that's sitting with me now, and I don't want to be tedious. I don't want to be an ass. I ate like shit. I just ate like shit. It's like a state fair... For hipsters, that's what Bumbershoot is. And, and I, I apologize if you guys, some of you didn't know that I was going to be up there. I have a problem with doing the, the, you know, with promoting myself. I get on the mic, I talk to you guys, I tell you what's going on in my life, and I forget to tell you where I'm going to be. But a lot of what the fuckers showed up. We had great shows. We did a live WTF with Patton Oswalt, Doug Benson, Eddie Pepitone, El Chupacabra, aka Nick Kroll, hilarious Donald Glover. Well, I'll be sharing that uh, episode with you probably in the next week or so. I uh, did a few shows with Tig Notaro, who you met on my show. I had a great time. I was up there with uh, with my gal. We got to do the hotel room thing for three days. You know what I mean? You know, it's good to go other places to have arguments and yell. It's fun to go out of town to embarrass yourself, uh, you know, to a hallway of people that... Uh, don't know you at all as opposed to your neighbors good to get that out out there in the world uh, we actually we also had some good times i don't need to go into detail but here's what's lingering with me the fact that i ate a brick of curly fries i ate an elephant ear do you know what an elephant ear is doesn't matter fried dough fried just fried dough with some cinnamon that's all i ate a uh, a uh, hot dog with sauerkraut. I ate a box of chocolates. I had some uh, Ben and Jerry's ice cream. I had a slice of pizza in between all of that. I ate a lot of backstage food, cheese cubes. And I got home. And, uh, you know, because, as you know, you know, deep down, I'm a bulimic teenage girl. I wanted to hang myself. So I wanted to eat some healthy stuff here at the house. And you know what I got at the house here after being away for three days? You know what's here at the house to eat? Nothing. There's nothing to eat at all. So did I go out to a store to buy something to eat? No, no, no. I'll make do. I'll make do with what I have. What have I got? I've got some sliced jalapenos. Okay, I guess that's a start. You can't really build a meal around it. I got some sliced uh, uh, bread and butter pickle slices. Nope, not a meal. Frozen raw chicken. N- not a meal right now. Not unless you want to have chicken popsicles. It's not a meal. You can't just suck on a piece of raw frozen chicken. You probably could though, right? Doesn't it kill the bacteria? I mean, I mean, theoretically, if if you were going to have to eat raw chicken, couldn't you eat frozen raw chicken? So I ended up having two slices of cheese and a cup of coffee. Fuck. I'm dying for a cigarette. All this non-nicotine shit, you know, okay, I've been off the nicotine. All right, I've chipped a little. I'll be honest with you. I've done some chipping. That's what they used to call it back in the day before I was uh, involved with drugs. I believe that uh, chipping meant... Uh, yeah, I've been taking... I, I've had a lozenge. Hold on. I think I'm being... There's a air raid. Holy shit. Is that guy going down? Should I be concerned? But I enjoyed the nicotine because it made my metabolism high, and uh, and now I get aggravated at everything very easily, very easily. I went to this movie theater the other night to see a movie. It's not listed as a special movie theater. It used to be a regular movie theater. I go to Pasadena uh, with Jessica. We go in, and it's called the uh, the Gold Star, Gold Card, Gold Chase. I fucking don't know. It's some sort of special theater. We walk in and, and, and they're like, do you have a reservation? We're like, what? It's a movie theater. It's not even an arc light. It's not like a big arc light theater either. It's just a little theater. No, we'd have a reservation. Well, our, our seating is all booked up. And I'm like, what the fuck? What kind of fucking theater is this? 
And that was the first time I went after I paid seven dollars to park. Then I went back again, not realizing again what it was. And, and we get there. Do you have reservations? We don't have reservations. Well, I still have some seating available. What you do is you have to join the theater over there. You know, give your email punch in your preferences, and then come back and get the tickets. So I do that. We go to get the tickets, and uh, Jessica says, I already got a ticket. And I'm, and I'm like, all right. She says, well, it's $22. I'm like, for both of us? And she's like, no, for one of us. I'm like, $22 for each of us? What the fuck is that? And apparently it's this movie theater where there's like 12 seats in it. You sit in a Lazy Boy recliner. They'll feed you food. They'll give you cocktails if you want cocktails. And it's sort of a special movie theater. I'm like, that is fucking bullshit. Movies are for the people. If people want to do that kind of movie viewing, let them do it at home. You guys are you're, you're classist. You're idiots. I fucking hate your guts. This place is disgusting. Get your money back. We're leaving. I got that angry at a movie theater for having 15 seats, Lazy Boy recliners, where you could sit and you had to pay $22 a ticket so somebody could give you food and drinks at your Lazy Boy recliner. Go home! Just go home and watch the movie. That cost me $7. Today on the show we have Whitney Cummings, who many of you know from the Comedy Central Roasts. I've worked with her a bit. I do know she's a hard worker. Excuse me. She's done some funny things. And you guys uh, enjoy when I have women on the show. Sometimes I get emails like, where are the women? I don't know. Send me some. But Whitney and I have a, a bit of a past. Nothing too sordid. There was no uh, fluids exchanged. But we've worked together. I enjoy her. And she should be here in a minute. I have also have a large cold brewed coffee project going on in the house. Cold brewed coffee project, which is means that you have to take grounds, put cold water on them, let them sit overnight, then double filter them in order to make iced coffee because it's supposed to be great. Obviously, I'm doing it because it occupies some of my time that I should be using to do other things like writing, or perhaps shopping for something other than slices of cheese. I'm making cold brewed coffee because I started that project last night. So Audible is sponsoring today's show, and as many of you know, Audible.com is a frequent sponsor of WTF, and through Audible, WTF can give you a free audiobook download of your choice. If you go to audiblepodcasts.com slash WTF pod, you can get your free audiobook download, and they've got everything. If you like sticking things in your ears and listening to things, or walking around your house and listening to why you make cold brewed iced coffee, or maybe sitting in your living room as you do other things and listening to things, audible.com has some stuff for you. Dig that. Go to audiblepodcast.com slash WTF and you will receive a free audiobook download on me. You can choose from everything. Obviously, many of the comedians we've had on have their records there, but I was talking about therapy, so I just typed in keyword therapy. And what do I get? One Nation Under Therapy, How the Helping Culture is Eroding Self-Reliance. I don't know if I like the slant of that. Uh, how about this one? Energy Therapy and the Kundalini. Experience the illuminating world of the energy within. Yeah, mine is very illuminating and very hostile. Choosing a good therapist or becoming one. Huh. That Maybe that's what I should do. What is this? The Husbands and Wives Club, a year in the life of a couple's therapy group. Yeah, that's behind me. Oh, shit, Dr. Katz's therapy sessions. Huh. Anyways, audiblepodcast.com slash WTF pod. Go get your freebie on me. serious fucking deal you have the sound thing so you think it looks you think this is what you think the inside of my head looks this like this is exactly what the inside of your head looks like highlighters weird santa hat holograms pink construction helmet yeah books look at those troll dolls remember those yeah i, I feel like if i went into your brain it would just be like oh my god remember those yeah yeah a lot of that <laughs> a lot of just random <laughs> yeah, that'd be like uh, there'd be like a whole gymnasium full of women remember them <laughs> <Come on>. <laughs> <laughs> and then just like sort of uh <laughs> self-help books not too many <laughs> by the way also duplicates of everything sure like, you have noah's ark you have like two noah's arcs here well i, I happen to be a voice on that pilot the yeah. Noah's Ark pilot that I just received that. Really? That sounds cool. Well, it's a cartoon. Well, I had no idea. You're becoming more and more famous for your voice. How does that feel? 
Well, it feels a little weird. Do you feel that? Do you feel like I'm getting more famous? Well, I mean, you must. You are definitely getting famous. Hold on. Let me turn the air off. People, we're get I now, I, I now have this uh, thing where, you know, normally it's, it's. I always feel like it's interesting, and you've been doing this so much longer than me, um, but and better than me for longer than me. I don't know. Is that true? Yeah, that is true. But you know, when you some you tell someone you're a comedian, and yeah. they're always like, "Oh my God, do you know? Yeah, Enrique Iglesias. Yeah, or that's not even saying Gabriel Iglesias. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Enrique Iglesias. Enrique Iglesias. Enrique Iglesias is, sure. is probably funnier than me. Yeah. Um, but uh. But I get a lot of, oh, my God, do you know Mark Maron? Get out of here. Yeah. Come on. A lot of that. A did lot you, of that. And then do you say, I was on his show? I did say that, but because apparently your show is like the highest rated show. Or something. I hope that happens. There's a lot of buzz. There, I, yeah. Maron. I, I How do a, you feel after doing comedy this long and writing books and being a legend that now you, there's buzz? There's buzz after 25 <laughs> years because I'm doing a show in my garage. <laughs> That nobody has any control over. Finally, I've arrived. <laughs> that's what it is. I feel like that's when comics get successful when there's no one's like when they're developing done? that when they're finished when they're fucking <laughs> when at they're the, either done yeah. or dead when they can't get any work. <laughs> that's when it happens. <laughs> when it's just you casually talking to your friends in your garage. I hope that you're right. I don't know. I, there is a lot of buzz. All right, Whitney I was Cummings. standing in line for an iPhone and uh, everyone was talking about your podcast. No, my guess is Whitney Cummings here at the garage at the Cat Ranch. Whose phone is that? Is that my phone? Definitely. Did, Oh, no. You know what? It's uh, it's my computer. You're the one with the buzz. You're the one getting calls. Come on. Wait. So you're waiting for, uh, at the Apple store? I was waiting in line at the Apple store, and uh, I was standing next to a guy who, look, you have a very hip demographic, just so you know. Lots, oh, of, lots of skinny jeans. Oh, God. Vans, really? Vans with no socks. No. And uh, someone was like, uh, what do you do? I was like, I'm a comedian. They're like, oh, my God, do you know Mark Maron? No. And I was like, yes. And young guy. And I was so like, there's... yeah. And then someone else in line, because when you're in line- And then what did they say, though? I hate then, that guy. No, they were like, I love that guy. He's so smart, da, da, da. Oh. And he also said, which I really appreciate it. He's like, I like it when he interviews people, but when they don't talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. That's... I thought that was like a perfect sort of thing. <laughs> it's just sort of the person you interview is like in a backboard for your oh, own the, uh, rambling. Well, that's that's the style. Yeah. That's the style I've created. Yeah, you do the... a show where people come on the show and interview you. Yeah, that's fine every with episode. me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad I, I have Buzz at the Apple Store online. You do, because well, then you interview some really pretty high-profile people. People that like don't even do like The Tonight Show and Letterman. You got like... like Yeah, I get people that... Uh, yeah, it's odd who I get. But, you know, I had a fight to get you. I mean, what did this take? Oh, Months my God. And weeks? This, you would think we you were know, tons. Like- Barack Obama and Beyonce. Tons of rescheduling. Right, I know. Just sort of hour to hour with yes, you. Yes, that was pretty much. We, we changed it maybe 25 For, uh, yeah, times. Yeah, at least that. And I like this, to play hard to get. Oh, do you? Yeah. So yeah. The, talk about buzz and heat. You know, <laughs> Whitney Cummings is impossible to get on the podcast because she's just too big. Uh, no, I, I I don't even know if it's I'm too big. I'm just um, a basket case, and I just, for some reason. Are you really, though? Come I, on. It's like I have maybe five meetings a week, but for some reason I schedule them all at the same time. Because oh, that I'm happens. just like, yeah. Right. You know what I mean? It's. it's oh, I remember the last time you had something else booked. I did. And, and I was like, oh, hey, sorry. For some reason, I, I have a meeting with like the head of NBC. But I also did you. Like, I just don't look at the now, let's be honest. iPhone. Let's be honest. Like, you know, a year or so ago, we worked together. How long ago was that? Three years ago? Two years Maybe ago? In La Jolla? Something like that, yeah. And you were opening for me. And now, like, you're, <laughs> you're selling out stadiums. <laughs> and uh, I only perform in uh, airport hangars now. Oh, yeah. really? No. Do you have to rent them out? <laughs> I do. <laughs> the Standing uh, room only. But you were funny, and uh, oh. and I liked you. Yeah. Yeah. And, I remember, you know what? I, that what? was actually the last enjoyable time I went down to the La Jolla Comedy Store. <laughs> that was that it place. was. Can I say that, that is such a hell? And I and I tell them I will not go down there anymore because it's just not worth it. Because San Diego is racist, and they're all really conservative, like military people some and of them and except for the beach retards yeah there's like cool there's some like and I'm like <laughs> the that's beach cool. tards there's like yeah so if I want to look for a husband that's a perfect place oh but come on I um but no but I I do going down there it's like I remember when I went down there when Barack Obama had just gotten elected and I said something that was just like hey did anyone vote for Barack Obama I didn't say pro con yeah yeah someone in the back was like you liberal cunt no ran towards the stage I mean it's Ra- just like it Wait, ran towards the stage and you know how good the security is at the comedy yeah, store in La Jolla yeah, just comics yeah going, it's should we do something? <laughs> it's like stoned comics <laughs> yeah. um, who, you know. And so I, I, and then I had a couple other situations. That I just feel like they're just rowdy and, and they're all in. The place is sort of chaos, chaotic and weird. Now, if it gets too yeah. hot in here, there's nothing I can do. Are you going to be all right? Okay. No, no, it's good. I like, I'm getting swampy already. This uh, is going to be It's ridiculous. I, I, tr- I left the air <laughs> it's on. It's not your fault. It's a hundred degrees out. Even if it was good air conditioning. I wouldn't have, it wouldn't, Thank it wouldn't God. matter. But okay. So that was the time we worked together. But now, like I talked to somebody who was. 
was it? I had Natasha Ogero on the live one the other night. Love Natasha. Do you? Love. Okay. And she said that you had turned down Last Comic Standing. Is that true? That is true. You turned Natal- down? You turned down to judge it. Why? I don't. I, I that's not for me. Oh really? Yeah. That's, you, you don't, you're smiling like you have like a wicked well, smile. Well, on no, your it's face. just because like it's interesting because you have you you're a very a disciplined comic. You do yeah. uh, you you work hard on your jokes. I've seen you work hard. Like you know, yeah. I I know that you're out there like a real trooper doing your jokes every yeah. night. But that required you to be a dick. Well, and, and you're not even, really a dick. I wouldn't be a dick, like, but I just don't believe that I qualify as someone who should be judging other comedians that, number one, have maybe have been doing it longer than me. That's a good and, point. You know what I mean? I just, yeah. I'm not, I, I, you know, and I also um, don't ever look at a comic and say he sucks. Like, I'm just like, he's doing something different than me. I just don't feel comfortable. I don't believe I'm qualified to say whether someone's funny or not. You're pretty diplomatic. It's sort of annoying. I'm, I'm not trying to be diplomatic. No, 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 but I I'm know. Trying to think, I'm, and also, here's another thing. is that um, In I general, th- though. I think the show's corny. Yeah. Um, I think the show's embarrassing to comics. Yeah. Um, I, I agree with you. But I truly do not believe that I'm qualified <laughs> to say someone else is funny. Like, if I look at someone, I'm not like, he sucks. I'm just like... He's doing something different than me. Right. I mean, the comics that I think are really funny, a lot yeah. of people don't think are really funny. Is you know, your manager still produce it? He still produces it, <laughs> but he actually had no idea that I yeah. was being offered it. Right. He, um, you know, didn't want me to do it. NBC called me directly and asked me about it, and it was funny because I, um, I also just don't think it's a forum in which I'm able to be funny. Right. It wasn't like didn't seem like a situation where I could do. You're what a joke I do. person. Yeah, I don't want to sit around and judge people. You know, talk. Yeah, and also, and also, the way that my manager helps me decide if I'm going to do. A job or not is he does my tonight show intro with that credit in it uh-huh. so he did you know we were try- i was trying to figure out if i should do it or not because kindler was on at who i love and geraldo who right. I love, and i was like oh that sounds like it'd be fun right um but he said he's like ladies and gentlemen this next woman's a judge on last comic standing please and i was like cringed and was like oh my god i can't do that that's embarrassing i, th- I think it's a good call but it's also another thing is that they require you um, to say no to a certain amount of people. I mean, it's a f- TV show. It's a fucking right. reality show right. that's scripted. So right. they say, I mean, I don't know Natasha's experience, but they say things like, okay, this next guy, you have to say no because we already have too many yeses. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. can you, can you, our friends, some of our friends auditioned for that. No, I agree with you. I, can't, I, I think you did the right thing. I don't feel comfortable having Brody Stevens come in and be like, no, sorry. Like, you know what I mean? It's yeah. just people that I'm friends it's with. Already, show, show business is already hard enough and we're yeah. already uh, sort of dickish to each other sometimes. Yeah, why you do know we, what I mean? Why yeah. do you got to do it in front of other I people just, on television? On television? Yeah. I just, I don't know. It just wasn't for me and I'm sure Natasha made it good in her. I don't know. I didn't, I've never watched this show. never seen that show. You've never watched it either? I, I've ever? never seen it. I've seen it on like people um, sometimes post links to their TV things on my Facebook page. Yeah. <laughs> so every now and then if I go through and delete it, I'll see someone. But, but it's funny that you're so diplomatic. And, and I, You know what? I'm not diplomatic. I'm di- That's truly the way I think about it. No, I know. I'm, I, 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 okay, I'm not di- using diplomatic as an insult. But, yeah. But yet Why you're is very... that an insult, by the way? Be- because <laughs> you think I'm like being like condescending. Yeah, no, I don't think you're being condescending. It makes me feel like I'm a pussy or something. <laughs> but I'm not. I'm f- fine with saying I think the show sucks. I think it's corny, but I do not believe I'm. Do you think I've been doing comedy for like five years? Do you think I? No, no, no. I understand, but I was. Someone's funny or not? I meant that you're being diplomatic and that you never like you don't you don't say you don't like comics. Like you're just gonna you're just gonna I say I don't really. I I may I, you know I used to a lot, but I just don't. What think, changed? I you know what? I, it's just I don't have any brain space for it. Like I just don't care. For resentment. Yeah, not even resentment. I mean, there's no reason if someone's doing. I just I don't feel competitive with other comics, and therefore I don't feel that I should judge them. Did you ever? Oh yeah, in the beginning you feel competitive, I think. But now that you're getting a little Not even that, because there's always gonna be someone who's better than you. There's always gonna be someone that's but more see, successful the, than you. Better in what way? But I figured out who the fuck I am. Right. So now I'm not you know, my, my favorite quote, and I'm really into quotes that I don't know who said them. Yeah. Um this one quote Maybe that we can figure it out. Kind of changed my life, <laughs> get on fucking Wikipedia, is that comparison is the worst form of violence against yourself. Wow. I know. I don't know. Comparison it, it, is the worst, worst form of violence. So I used to run How about when I hit myself in the head with a hammer? <laughs> that's... I don't know. That's self love in a lot of uh, in a lot of circles. That to me is a healthy relationship. Comparison. What does it it's, say again? You com- memorized it. it. Comparison is the worst form of violence. Get yourself. So I did used to run around and go. She's, you know, has more than me. I should have more than her. But that is just a way to self abuse. Well, you're one. Oh, that's very sweet. You're right. Well, you're a very <laughs> self aware person. You've done some work on yourself. You mm-hmm. do. Like I noticed that the last uh-huh. time we hung out. I just. But I did find that I that I just don't, I wouldn't want to professionally do something that I try to not do in private in terms of comparing and judging other people 
you know, hopefully I'm going to make all the money I want to make, but I don't want to run around defending what I'm doing all the time. I'm, I know I look 100, but I'm actually pretty young. So it's like, I don't like, it's one of those things where I felt like I would constantly be in comedy clubs and people would be like, oh, you're doing last comedy standing. Yeah, but I'm just doing it because I'm a like, yeah, I don't yeah, want to yeah. feel like I would have felt so defensive and embarrassed. Right. But you don't, um, like let's, in terms of, of growing and, and, and becoming a better person and doing comedy. Cause I remember working with you. I, I know you, we went running together. We did. Uh, and you, we were running from something. Yeah. Well, that's together. always. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and we couldn't talk about it. At all. It was, we were just, we it, was, was, it was vague. It was very vague, <laughs> but it was <laughs> intense. A vague force that came from within <laughs> us was. was something we were running from. And we, we went and buy uh, healthy food. We did. We went to that health food store. Yeah, and we talked about yoga. We did. And you have nice skin. Thank you. Everybody yeah. says that, which is so weird because I don't, I didn't always have nice skin. So now I'm like adjusting to the fact that I do because everyone seems to think that. But you're you're like a comic, so you've got to be pretty fucked up somehow. Yeah, you know, I, here's, a, I, 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 that theory. Where do you I, come from? I obsess about that a lot, what? about the idea that comics are fucked up, but I think everyone's fucked up. I think doctors uh, and truck see drivers. that again and, with the diplomacy. Oh, I'm not trying to be, <laughs> I'm trying to defend, because I'm about to go into a whole thing of probably why I'm crazy. I just didn't want to umbrella say that all comics are crazy but wait what kind of crazy are you i couldn't quite figure it out what did you do uh, before comedy well i think my and where'd you go the, to college by the way you let's pen, talk about pen in philadelphia you went to pen in philadelphia yeah. but you know it's what good it school comics because it's funny because everybody says smarty. comics are damaged comics yeah. are damaged yeah i always defend comics and say you know what fuck you comics are just smart and and passionate about shit and you're a perfect example of this the kind of person who shit you care about shit that no one else cares about and you're haunted by things that people just you know don't think twice about right that's called uh, obsessive obsessive and depressed. compulsive <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, on to me. No, I know. Thing. I think you're right. I, th- I think that I'm not saying that comics are damaged necessarily. I do think we're overly sensitive. I yeah. do think that y- you know most of us have a similar sort of uh, character flaw, and that we're a little more needy yeah, than other yeah, people. Yeah, but uh, analytical, neurotic. No, I think maybe. we're all very smart. Yeah, yeah. I think that, I, and I may, I never want to say this about myself, but I do think most comics, successful ones, especially ones I admire, have above average intelligence. You think so? Yes, I I completely do. Really? Yeah, I think comics matter more than. Politicians matter more than journalists. Well, I think I mean, we're more. Uh, we have the capacity to be more honest. Yeah. Well, I like. I don't know I about would, journalism. If, if I had a, if I, if I had like an, you know, eight-year-old kid, I'd rather him watch, you know, you do an hour than wa- have him watch the news. I think he'd learn more. <laughs> I, about what? About well, as long as you're not talking about, you know, <laughs> that not only murderous it, impulses. Right. If you're talking about politics, not only does it society. suck in the world, but apparently it sucks inside of us too. Is that what you want to teach your kid? Yeah, it's completely. There, there are battles to be uh, to be fought on every front, within and without. So you went to Penn, and where'd did, you grow up? I do go to Penn. I'm from D.C., Washington D.C. Originally, were your parents in politics? They were not at all. Um, mm. They weren't. My my dad was kind of. Um, uh, it's sort of just a vague uh, venture capitalist. I thought you were going to say a vague presence in my life. He was sometimes <laughs> that there. Should, that, by the way, that too. He was. He did come and go randomly. Um, had had many uh, wives and and such. really, yeah. A lot of um, I had a, a but you know what? It's one of those things where. So like, I'm assuming that your parents are divorced. Divorced, yeah, okay. they were divorced when I was very young. He didn't have wives. He's behind been, your yeah, he bed. well, he, we're Mormon. No, <laughs> um, he had uh, no, he's had four wives since. Really? But yeah, but my mom worked, which is something I really appreciate. But she was always gone, so I was just always at home. I did have to work very hard to get attention, which I still do at the comedy store every night. <laughs> you know, so that was You're a pattern a trooper. that started early. No, I mean, um, and I uh, yeah, tumultuous. Definitely did a lot of drugs as a kid, and just I, you know, I kind of had to Your raise dad myself. Dad has four wives. He had four wives and numerous mistresses. Is he still around? Um, he's still around. Yeah, yeah. My dad looks exactly like Dan Aykroyd, uh-huh. and he is probably the most charming person you'll ever meet. Like he's, I, I, you, I would guess if he's had four cannot, wives, you cannot exactly, you cannot stay mad at him. He's the kind of guy who will do something really egregious. Then why would they leave? Um, why they let be? Well, be, I think they, they, they were, got I think one? they were forced out. Exactly. <laughs> it was like, oh, you married someone else. I guess we should break up. I think was kind of how it is. Uh, but I found out I had sisters I didn't know about, really and brothers, and yeah. So I how keep, many? I keep finding. I know of like four. Brothers and sisters that I've never met that are just like mistresses and random. Yeah. Wait, from un, from wives from people that weren't his wives. Uh, just, that were not his wives. Yeah, just oh random. My God. So I he know. was just out there spreading just his out seed. Out there, fucking doing it. Now, how'd you I find know. them? I don't want to talk too much about this because I already okay. have random family members asking me for money that I've never met. Are you serious? <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, because I mean, you just, they see you on TV. You they're like, give me some money. Totally. Your nephew, you know, wants to go to private. Did they school. find you on Facebook? 
that and calling and calling my sister and my brother and you so know. you have you have a sister and a brother from a, your I've, two parents yes my uh, my brother's my half brother he lived in England now he lives in Dubai randomly he's very smart a lot of comedy gigs in Dubai he did there you know what, you know what I <laughs> did do stand up in Dubai you did? randomly with Ahmed Ahmed you did uh, yeah he organized some thing over there and we you went, went over there, there did you have twice. to wear a, a, a thing you know what I love this this is fascinating and you'll probably have a lot a to burka? say about this I did not have to wear a burqa I went over there thinking I was going to be completely covered up. I literally came off the plane in a snuggie. Like I thought I was going to be. The women dress like whores. They're all, it's like the comedy Dubai, store. Okay. And the women dress like whores. Right. Dubai is kind of like the, the Vegas. Vegas so right, the, yeah. It's like the Vegas over there. And I. it's funny because I asked this woman because there were all these women that were just in sluts like bikinis, yeah. fucking camel. I was stunned. Yeah. And then there, I did see a lot of women that were in their 20s in the full garb. Yeah. And I said to them, I was like, you know, is this oppressive to you? Da, 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 da. And they said, they were like, no, we think we choose this. Women in America, we think are oppressed because they have to get plastic surgery and they're judged by their body. They had some really good fucking points. But the women that were dressed really scantily, I yeah. was like, oh my God, what are you doing? Yeah. Are you allowed to, yeah. are you to wear this? Oh, yeah. And, and the, <laughs> literally this one girl looked at me dead serious. She yeah. was like, it's fucking hot. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's like 130 degrees, and I was like, you know what? That's a pretty good point. I think I'm trying to attach but, too much meaning to this. But they, but those women would go put that stuff on later. Well, some of them did. It's a choice over there. It's absolutely in a Dubai. Choice. In Dubai, well, here's the thing. Dubai is like an amalgamation of all those Middle Eastern countries: Saudi Arabia and uh, Egypt and yeah. Jordan and all those places. So yeah. it's like you know. It's 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 there's there's varying levels of oppression and I was asking someone about the most oppressive places and they said in Saudi Arabia and the most conservative places um women can't drive they can't read and they're not allowed to work. Right. And I was like that sounds awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Does someone pay <laughs> what you, do you to mean? do that? I know, literally, I was like, get... that's impressive? Like, that <laughs> sounds amazing. So <laughs> it did kind of blow my mind. Yeah, but um, then I guess you have to be part of a... Uh, I, I, I don't know how it works over there, and I don't want to be racist. Yeah. But it seems like there's a lot of people with a lot of fucking money. A lot of money. They are so incredibly rich. It's a ridiculous amount of money. The, but there is, but that's the top 1%. Everyone I else think is I, broke. I, I talked to Aaron Cater. I think he did a private gig at some guy's house for- For like 30 grand or yeah. something. Yeah, they have Just all kinds of Just to come over and eat well, dinner funny, with them. my whole thing, that's my same thing with colleges. Yeah. I'm always like, do you guys not know how much we normally get paid? <laughs> like, you know right, what I mean? Yeah. There's clear. Apparently, there is some. Someone was telling me like a website that tells you how what comics quotes are. Like at yeah, I know. Fascinating, right? I, I mean, I I'd like to know what mine are. I, I want to see it, but no I don't one ever pays see them. It. I know yeah. completely. So, but apparently, but I just wonder how why they think they have to pay us fifty grand. Yeah, sometimes. Have you ever had that situation where you, you're paid money and you're like, you, you don't feel like you should take it. You don't feel like it because yeah. you just didn't do it. Yeah, because well. you're like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> he just takes some money back. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Did like, you, you ever know, do that? You know, no. Do you ever take? My whole thing is, yeah. My whole thing is, if I did bad, the worst I do, you should have to pay me more. Oh, really? Because it's such an unpleasant experience. Yeah, clearly, you know, I mean? you know why'd you put me through this? Yeah, like, if I I'm, want more money. If I'm bombing horribly, well, because you know, those nightmare gigs, like corporate gigs and stuff, where they're like, you get there. And they're like, so anything, anything we can get for you? And I'm like, oh, just you know that we, we're all good. But oh, you need a mic stand? You need a, or <laughs> right. you, wait, you need a mic? I bought a mic stand. Wait, did you? Yeah. Oh, look, you did. But you know, it's you know sometimes they have those weird like. That's why like, I bought that. Those crazy ones that uh, the, are like for yeah, musicians. The worst. And what are those? And then sometimes they're like, oh, you needed a microphone. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh shit. Sorry. This... Did you want chairs? You want people oh, to sit want, in chairs? Is that cool? Yeah. Or it's this just is like, a college gig. There's always a college the gigs. Worst. Or by the way, corporate gigs. I did one recently where I. What get, do you do to corporate I'm, gig? Well, I, was, I never get asked. To I do was hosting gig. it. I don't get asked to do a lot of them. Um, I hosted it, and they're like, "Okay, great. So you're gonna host it. And um, first, can you call out these bingo numbers and pull oh, yeah. pull, pull something out of a pot like a yeah, raffle? And then right. right before I went up to perform, the guy yeah. goes, "Okay, Whitney Cummings is about to come up perform. But now, just so you know, the buffet just opened and the, the poker worst. tables open in the back. <laughs> so there was just a mass exodus of people. <laughs> and then I was about there was a dance floor between me and the tables, about oh, fifty odd. feet. Yeah. So it's like. If you're gonna do that kind of shit, I'll take the twenty grand. I well, I did that. How much you made? Good for you. Yeah, you know. That, you but the uh, the I did one of those exactly like that, where there were two buffet lines, there was a dance floor, there was an While ice sculpture stage, at the end. It's yeah. bright light. The it's worst. Like daytime. They don't disaster. care. No, don't care at all. It's like a corporate party or something. So what do you, what do you think most of your visibility is from now, Chelsea? I don't. You know, Chelsea is really fucking powerful. I mean, she really. I mean, powerful in terms of people really and watch that show. Do you tour with the? What do you go on those? Tours? I do some of the comedians of Chelsea lately tours. And how do they the, sell? Good. Um, they sell really, really well. They always have like you know a couple of the writers, and then they'll have like a big headline. 
designer uh-huh. to you know which um and uh and it's great you know chelsea's been so supportive and it's like because and i'm sure you talked about it with natasha it's like to have a woman you know support other women is really awesome and rare and cool right you know so I'm, I'm actually psyched to be a part of it and i i did so many cities this year i did like 60 cities this year that now i just want to do kind of like one-nighters and those are one night you did 60 thing. cities in yeah. what you mean weeks in like, 60 different cities like one night some one nighter so i was this year i did chelsea's tour i did the tour with dennis leary i did this other college tour you did the rescue me tour yeah yeah are you on that show i'm not on the show but dennis um just asked me to do it, it yeah was cool so i th- saw so i would do like like a Monday night, a Tuesday night at like a random theater college, and then do a weekend. So it was you, Lenny Clack. It was Lenny Clack, Adam uh, Ferrara, Adam Ferrara, and then a couple other people kind of s- switched in and Lenny out. Lenny Clack, Lenny Clack. He is funny. I and know. By the way, the nicest guy. I've known. I mean, I knew Lenny when I was starting out in Boston. I was I mean, going to say I knew Barry Katz when he was a comic. Oh my god, that's so embarrassing. Did you? I, Your manager. I, I remember when he was a comic. I used to do. He started me. I did my first gigs for him when he booked one nighters out of a basement you. Everyone, in Alston. I know everyone hates him, but he loves you. Yeah, I, I have nothing. You know, I mean, people. You know, a lot of people have bad things to say about him and whatever, but he's of course, good for. He I, I, I know he's yeah, but he's oddly really good for me. The one thing I know about him is I saw where he started. Yeah. I saw where he is now. Yes. So whatever the fuck he did. You know, he did something right and he worked hard to get yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what? It's a it, dirty what, business. He, it is a dirty business. It's gangsters. It's, I mean, Barry, and I tell him yeah. sometimes, like, Barry, you need to have some fucking tact. Like, yeah. you know, you know, he didn't come up through, but there's so many managers and agents and stuff who were like, went to law school or business school and now they're eight. They know nothing about comedy. Barry loves comedy. I you know. know what I mean? And I, that I, yeah, he means does. a lot to me. And he's actually a really good manager because I think a lot of people ask, and I don't know if you ever talk about this with the girls that you interview about, like, why are women not as funny as men? Why aren't there more female comics? My theory about yeah. it is that it's not that women aren't funny it's just that women get seen before they're ready it takes a couple years to get fucking good and to figure out what your point of view is and i feel like the best managers of women just slow their women down so barry for the first th- three years i was doing comedy he wouldn't let me showcase for anything he wouldn't let me you know do anything you know yeah. he just sl- let me he's like just get good and he said when you kill 10 times in a row well you know i'll I, get you showcases when i watch you like like I don't. At first, when I knew you a couple of years ago, you always had jokes. But now, like you seem to have. Like I don't know what it is up there. Your <laughs> point of view. You don't seem to be affected uh, by what the audience is doing. <laughs> that you, you you seem to work so hard. I'm a that, machine gun. Yeah, they're a bit. It's not a give or take. It's not a. It's <laughs> do you, am I wrong? You know what? It's funny because it's like... But I imagine when yeah. they do yes. connect with you, you must feel elated. Yeah. But I mean, I see the way your process is. You just yeah. you get up there. It doesn't matter who's there or, or who went on before you or what the audience looks like. It's just like bang, 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 bang. Well, it's to me, it's... Yeah, I like to take a uh, rape approach. Yeah, to them? <laughs> to them. No, it's true. It's interesting because I do. I tend to... Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, people, I, I never know how to describe my own stand-up. It seems so narcissistic and lame. But when people have described me, they describe it a couple ways that I guess are probably true. They say, like, I'm a machine gun, that I take a very surgical approach. You know what I mean? A lot of people get on stage and they're going, okay, the gl- person behind me just bombed. So what's going on? Why do you guys suck? Like, I don't acknowledge that kind of energy in the room. I just kind of make it what yeah, I, I think, want I think it what be. you do, you're just an, you're an aggressive yeah. joke teller yeah. that that like and, and it's become your personality which is sort yeah. of interesting because your timing and the way i mean you you write everything all your jokes are written yeah. and you you're constantly you just don't go joke to joke to joke yeah. to joke but after a while after a few years of doing that yeah. you now have a certain edge to yourself you have a certain charm you're comfortable in your craft so it's not like you're really speaking yeah. from a, a point of view but you definitely tell jokes from a, a point of view you have a way of doing it you know what it is it's that or timing Original, I know, yeah. It's that original room timing from that, the comedy store. Uh, that you, yeah, exactly. You have to take control because it's like one of those things. And Kevin Christie and I were talking about it, about how like if you give them a second, you know, they will heckle you. They will get up to the back. You know what I mean? It's just one of those things where it's like you just can take no prisoners. It's like I just try, I do try to kind of take control, right? You know. And then when I think then when it's easy, it must be feel great. I mean, yeah. I didn't see your special, but I imagine they were all there to see you, so it was probably. Just... I was going to say I think the dynamic is changing a little bit because since people. People kind of start to know me so now. Uh, I can take a breath and I can. You might take really my open time. up. Yeah, and I can. And I've started. You know what? <laughs> writing more. I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, but I have started 
writing more on stage. Right. Well, the, instead yeah. of knowing what I'm going to do and just plowing through it, so it's more fucking around. The and, fear is going away. Well, because there's uh, there's a lot less. There's still a lot of fear. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. But um, yeah, the fear is lessened, and I give myself the benefit of the doubt, and the crowd does too. But, but what's respectable about your process now, I, I, whether or not I don't know. For sure, but like w- when I came up in New York, you know, people like Attell and people like Louie or people like myself, what you would do is you'd do as many sets as you could in a night. Yeah. And that's harder to do in this city. Yeah. But you do it somehow. I mean, yeah. like the one thing I know about you is that, and it reminds me of Attell in a way, is that you just keep pushing to the point where, like, you know, you just, you, you want your soul to have a callus on it. Aww. So you could. I, Why do I think that's a compliment? <laughs> I don't know. I literally was like, oh, thanks. And so, like, you know, so it's just, there's nothing in between you and the joke. And you're never going to be left vulnerable up there. It just yeah. seemed that you were constructing this armor made out of jokes. That's interesting. That you could just go up anywhere and just like, kish, kush, pow, bangs, and leave, uh, you know, intact. Because yeah. I never get the feeling that you, uh, see, I've tried to hurt you. And I, I don't. <laughs> I, I've not been able to get through. I'd, I'd like to know that you're hurtable. I think that I, um, well, it's the people that have the most armor are the ones that are most hurtable. Yeah. And that's why that's we have it. That's the one with the soft the, center. That's why we have it in the first place, I guess. But you know, I don't, I don't, it's not so much, and I, and I think that my new, because after just doing this hour, my new thing is all about, uh, vulnerability and, um, honesty and not that i have not, haven't been honest but i do tend to um hide behind good jokes you know what i mean that's and- true yeah i see that because like you know if you're going to really be a person with a point of view it seems like some of your jokes about women and men are you know they're it's not that they're predictable they're your approach to them but they're, the roles- ori- they're an original take on something a lot of people you know have done and i think kind of a specific take but now it's like i guess my, and my other thing that i'm really um concerned about is i try to never be self-indulgent on stage uh, I, i'm really careful about that because someone asked me recently, you just want to tell jokes i you know what i just want to i do want to give people their money's worth and i i do remind myself that this is a job and you know when i see people go up on stage with their notebooks and they're like oh what should i talk about it's just like you have 15 minutes up there and i and i just i just take every minute i'm on stage very seriously i guess and mm-hmm. i and i always am like and a lot of times when i plow through because it's like i want to get to the new stuff and i want to like you know um get better and build but it's also you know someone said to me recently they were like um you know, they said to me, they were like, someone who's not a comedian was like, so basically being a comedian is that you're just asking someone to pay you $25 to listen to you talk for an hour. I thought about that and it really hit me because I was like, not only am I asking someone to pay me 25 bucks to listen, yeah. they're dr- two drinks and, uh, you know, food right. and valet. Yeah. Someone's probably paying $120 That's right. to see you perform. To and be I entertaining. Guess my, yeah, my thing is I don't want to go up there and be like, so what the fuck, man? Where are you from? Oh, man, look at this. Right. Well, like, crowd, crowd work is what it is. I, you know what I mean? And yeah. I, I, I do think no, there's, I understand there's that something ethic. to be, yeah, there's something to be said for being comfortable and, and in the moment. So and you're stuff. an entertainer. I just, I just. Okay. You want them to get their, your money's worth. I just don't want people to walk away. I just, I just take it seriously. I guess I want to. But I mean, one of the things that like I, I notice about you, and I, and I don't, because you're, you're obviously intelligent. You're sophisticated. You, you. You're ambitious. Thank you. You are, and uh, and and. But like, what I want to know is why that, is being ambitious just real? Sad? Why is that all of a sudden lame? It's not. It's not lame. Really? No, no. I, I don't think. I don't think there's anything lame about it. I think yeah. that that it, it's it, it's a matter of. Of how people hide it. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know, anyone who's trying to do this is ambitious. Yeah, it's yeah. just some people are more focused than others. Yeah. And and people who are ambitious that aren't able to facilitate anything happening get yeah. bitter. Well, and then they're ambitiously bitter. It's true, yeah. And then you become the enemy, the people that are actually <laughs> You know, activating well, their it's ambition. It's one of those things where it's like it's 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 like, and it's not even. I don't like know how ambitious I am, but it's like you know, a lot of times people will, um, you know, I go to the comedy store and I go and I do my spot and I leave. Right. And everyone's like, "Oh, she's so ambitious. She's so da da." And I'm just like, "No, I'm just not going to hang out around the toxic cesspool of negativity and hate. <laughs> like, why does that make me? I'm going home to go to bed. I'm not going. I'm not networking. Like, I'm not going to some Hollywood party to network. Like, I'm sleeping. Cause yeah, I'm, but it's weird though, because some of your jokes do come. From uh, not a negative place, but they're dark jokes. A lot of them are a little bit, uh, a little bit hard. Yeah. So, right, so you don't want to hang around the negativity and the darkness. Yet sometimes you'll spew it. I am. No, no, I am a negative, <laughs> toxic. Dark you're not toxic. person. You're not I toxic, am, but I am definitely not. But I just don't, you know, because I think a lot. It's it's weird because I really feel like uh, people say you're so Hollywood because I don't hang out after my sets and I go to do another spot. I think that's the opposite of being Hollywood. I don't want to sit around with a bunch of comics who are going. So what are you doing? What are you doing next? What club are you playing? What what do you have a TV deal? Who's your agent? Yeah, fuck that guy. I just yeah, I just don't want to talk shit about other comics. Like yeah. I just it makes me uncomfortable. And do you get like, a lot of you feel like there's a lot feel, of hate coming at you? 
You know, it's weird. I, I, because you're also pretty and a comic. I here's another thing that's is that a, I that's don't. That's a difficult conversation. I, really? I don't. I honestly, I, I'm sure there is a lot. I don't feel it because then again, I also don't hang out. Yeah. At clubs. That's another way to avoid. But the, it's another way to avoid. The hate. But a lot of people. But I did get a lot last year. My favorite. Oh, and we'll get to the backhanded compliments in a minute because I know what? you and I love backhanded compliments. Yeah. Well, first of all, you love my mom. Watch my hour special. She watched uh, me for an hour. Yeah. Talk. Yeah. She calls me up. She goes, I just watched your special. I love the background. <laughs> no, come on. I swear to God. I can actually read you some emails from her. And then she sent me an email yeah. and she goes, great transitions. <laughs> you really blew through a lot of stuff. I mean, everything but good every, job. No, everything, good jokes. everything except what was going on with... Uh, my stand up or material. That's hilarious. She's pretty amazing. Um, with backing the compliments. But I had someone, um, you, even when people try to sort of like, I had a comic come up to me after the Joan Rivers roast. Yeah. And which you were great. Thank you. That was Thanks. a great, That's so uh, nice. that was a great joke. Now, uh, well, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. Thank you so much. Um, but someone came up to me and goes, um, he, this was his way of, insulting me but also pretending like he wasn't he mm -hmm. was like yeah i was just at her most of comedy magic club everyone was sitting around talking trash about how you didn't write your own jokes but i defended you mm. like that was his way of talking trash to me to my well, face did you write the but jokes I, I was a writer on the um roast before i was a performer on it. Right. i wrote for flavor Flav and saget and i only write my own jokes so it's 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 you know it's kind of a bummer do you write all your own jokes all my own jokes from the beginning from the beginning you mean for stand-up yeah absolutely yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, I've never, I've never taken well, jokes. Cleared up. I know it's ever, but, but you know no, but, but it's not a matter of taking jokes. See, like this is a but weird no thing. But no one's ever offered. Here's another thing. I used to write for comics. Right. I used to write for a lot of comics right. for a long time, and I can't anymore. What, just sell them jokes. But yeah, sell them jokes. People say, "Here's my hour. Just punch it up," or just write something about my two kids, or you know, different versions. Yeah, I don't understand. Like it's, it's a very strange thing that the different um, levels of weirdness that that yeah. occur yeah. because you know you get guys who are established comics that yeah. after. A a certain point expect people to write for them and yeah. have writers for them right they, they, that's part of the business and everyone knows that completely it's just it's it is what it is if you are a defined personality and you need to generate material i just i just by the way larry the cable guy perfect example so easy to write jokes for just says hey write me jokes on that but what, here's what i want to get at though what yeah. i want to get at is like that kind of comment when you got young comics or com or your peers yeah. saying that you know no, no i defended you for not writing your own jokes it's like yeah. it's almost like you can't win it's like that's yeah. not you're not stealing jokes yeah if you buy jokes you buy jokes it's yeah. your fucking business yeah but there's this idea that everybody has to write their own material yet everyone's yeah. heroes very few guys uh, that once they get to a certain level write their own fucking jokes. Yeah, but it's but there's also like the Louis C.K.s and the Attells and the Louis Blacks and stuff who it's like you know that's that would be the, the no more I understand that, but yeah. I understand the criticism. Yeah, but it's like but, the, but, I, the, but all, all those guys you mentioned well not Attell yeah. but they're they're very specific personalities right. who write from a, a right. and and do long form material. Right. And but, by the way, these are also guys who write for other people. Louis writes for Chris Rock. He has. You know what I mean? Exactly. He has before. So it's like, you know, I don't know. For me, I just I I I don't think not that there isn't art funny writers. I know a ton but of But I funny wonder why the fuck you would get attacked like that. I you know what? I I don't know. Uh, it's fine. I'm sure everybody gets attacked on some level. It doesn't necessarily affect me cuz I know the truth and, you know, I used to be But I wonder if it has to but do with you being a chick. Yeah, but you know what? Maybe cuz I'm like if you need that to make yourself feel better about the fact that I did well, then you can have it. If you need that delusion, if you need to convince yourself that someone else wrote for me, but it is just like there. Because I see your tweets, you're not sitting unless you're sitting there with someone you're writing with, or you have your joke no writer one, with you. Yeah, I have a joke writer that writes my tweets. <laughs> it's like, first of all, I'm glad that I'm flattered that people think that I can afford a, a, my own joke writer. Um, but no, I mean, I was a writer on the. I wrote other people's jokes on the roast two years in a row, so it's like I started as no, a I know. writer. Well, that's well, that's quite honestly. You yeah, know, I mean, I have my own issues about you know people being written for yeah, yeah in, in the sense that like there are certain things what there's a couple things that amaze me like you know when the writer strike happened yeah that you know that all of a sudden you know people didn't realize that how essential writers were because yeah, these yeah, guys yeah, could yeah, do, yeah. do their shows like yes. the thing that always amazed me is that as, as smart as people may be like if john stewart's audience they may be geniuses but on some level some of them still think he writes his own jokes yeah and and that you know that's just part of the business yeah. is that comics get to a certain level they can't generate rate that much material yeah. on a day-to-day -day basis so yeah. they have to have writers and that's part of the entertainment product that they're manufacturing yeah now when you're at my level or, or, or at your level you want to be your own joke writer because yeah. you want to define yourself yeah. with your humor yeah but because you do a certain style of 
joke. Yeah. They want to diminish that by saying that, you know, you didn't write your jokes, whereas you used to write for other people. And yeah. the truth of the matter is there has to be, if there's barter around joke writing and you're not stealing someone's joke and someone sells you a joke or writes yeah. a joke for you, there's yeah. no fucking crime in that. There's no crime in it at all. It's just not for me, at least yet, because right now I'm still trying to figure out who the fuck I am and what I want to say. You're a compulsive joke writer. Yeah, but it's also, and no one could write for me because no one knows what I'm going through. And I, for me, everything I want to do now is just really personal and really specific. So no one... How's that gonna, going? Uh, really well, actually. Like what? Give me an example. Um, I'm just trying to sort of talk more about, you know, my fear, speaking less generally. I don't want to do, guys do this and women do this. I want it to more be like, I'm scared shitless of this and why. You know what I mean? This I'm, is your own decision? Yeah, I'm trying to sort of, yes, it is. Well, it's hard to, to do that. I guess maybe I'm going to watch your special I just that's don't on want there, my but... material to ever be interchangeable with someone, you know what I mean? No, no, I get it. Yeah, that's a good transition to make from what you are essentially a joke-telling comedian, not 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 so much one-liner, but short-form yeah, jokes. Yeah, but the idea, I think, is just to go, so for me, the idea of stand-up, it's like, you know, a lot of comics can go on the road and they have people write for them and they go on the road. Uh, to me, I can't see what's fulfilling about that because you're just reciting things with that you have no attachment there to. There are guys that make a living uh, writing for Ron White. Completely. You know what? For, and, Ron, and they tour with him. Ron White, I did. And a, he's one of the greatest comics in the world, I did. Guy. I did some, uh, he is so talented. I did a show with him. He has four Bentleys that I know of. He showed up every day in a different belly. But yeah, he's got writers. But you know what? He's also sitting around with him at the writer's table. It was a pilot he was doing for Comedy Central. And I was like a course, like his sidekick correspondent yeah. person. And he didn't do it because for him to do a TV show, he loses money. Yeah. So they're sitting around. He's got like five writers, but people pitch him jokes. And he goes, no, no, how about this? And he changes them and right. makes them his own. And no, makes no, them it's a collaborative and effort. And he says, of he goes, that's a great joke. It's just not for me. You know, he really like. He's a, he's a great comic. He has taste and he has point of view. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, so I respected the way that he did that. That. He just sort of, but it's just sort of interesting. I mean, after a certain point, you know, people are paying to see that guy. Yeah, tell talk whatever he's going to do. Yeah, completely. But he's more. He can be a vehicle for other people's jokes. For me, it's just like when a huge, you know, a, who Tim mm. Allen or whatever just has someone write an act for him. You're just reciting something on stage. That just to me, that's not fulfilling. At least not now. Come back no, to me well, in no, ten years. Right, no, no. I don't think you're you're going in that direction. I think it's interesting that you started on the other side of that. I just yeah. I just interviewed Apatow, and you know, and he did the same wow. thing. You know, he you know that's he started right. he a joke writer. writer. Yeah, that's oh, right, yeah, that's absolutely. Right. But he wanted to be a comic but you know, he found his strength in joke writing yeah and he wrote for comedians and by the way it's also easier and faster for me not to mention more economically sound for me to just write my own stuff because sitting around reading other people it just doesn't it's one of those things where it's like you know when someone um this is like because you know now that i guess maybe i'm i'm doing you know decent i get all these calls that are like we wrote this for you um that we had you in mind for this part right but but, but then it, it unfortunately puts a mirror up to what people think of you and you realize how you're perceived what do you mean so oh, right Right, right, so, right. Because you're, so, like, I'm yeah. not that guy. So literally, yeah. literally, someone's like, I wrote this for you. It was written for you. And Check it out. I read it literally. Okay. Penny, 28, bitterly single and icy. Uh -huh. That was the description. Yeah. And he's like, This is you. This is exactly yeah, yeah. for you. And so right. when people write jokes for you, you know, maybe you start like someone, if they wrote for me, I'm sure they'd write all this <laughs> slutty <laughs> shit. And I'd be you like, should see what I get. Yeah, I was going to say, You think I'm a slut? <laughs> like, yeah, yours would be about like homicidal tendencies. <laughs> yeah, <we're just> and, <laughs> yeah. and neurotic, angry. I'm, I'm almost too afraid to have someone write for me because I don't want to know how I'm perceived. I don't know what, how people interpret me. Well, I think you're probably perceived in two ways. Like, the one, those two things are probably operative. The yeah. way you talk about sex and you know, as, as somebody, like, you know, because you talk about about sex yeah. uh, would would make you seem one way and the way yeah. you talk about you know, and how aggressive you are seem another way. Yeah. But I mean, I know you to be f pretty thoughtful, pretty sensitive and, and how are you going to integrate that? I don't know. So what are your, what are the challenges of that? What do you, what do you, when you write these new style jokes yeah. from your first person point of view, w what are the topics? You know, the risks I think are of honesty. I mean, you know, the risks of honesty. I mean, I think that also the, be embarrassed. The, yeah, the ramifications of talking about your parents and your, you know, sister and, and your boyfriend and, and, you know, and so it's, you know, and I hate to bring this, you know, Chelsea Handler, like in her, all of her books, she talks, says horrible things about her dad. My dad's an asshole. He lied. You know what I mean? You're just outing right. people that are close to you. And I already have such a terrible dynamic with my family to talk about them publicly. Do you? I mean, is it's, it really terrible? Not, it seems it, like it's okay you know with your what, mom. You know why it's okay now is because I did a lot of work on myself and decided not to just accept things that I can't change. Um, you know, so now that I've done that, it's not as as hard. But you know, it's it's in terms of talking about why I am the way I am and the things that my biggest fear is a lot of it would be having to talk about really personal things about my family that would probably embarrass them, and that that scares me. Does it? You think it'd be hurtful? I think it would hurt them, yeah, because they don't, they're not as self aware yet. They don't know all these Isn't things. Isn't there any way to frame themselves. that stuff? Yeah, so it's like for me, say, let's say you, um, you're, 
uh, you know, your girlfriend, she, let's say she's a drug addict. Right. Would you talk about that on stage? Would you yeah. feel comfortable saying her name and talking about it? Well, yeah. I don't know if I'd have to say her name. If you did an hour special, yeah, tomorrow and said, you know. Well, I have very specific experiences and I do talk about them. Yeah. And, and I don't need to mention names, but the only thing I find about talking about specific experiences is that it is a big transition from, from talking generally. Generally. Where, where, where you're presenting it like we all relate to this. And yeah. you may even write, you may be even water down your feelings about things in yeah. order for more people to relate to it. So as soon as you say I, that means it's you and them. Yep. And then, you know, the risk is, you know, how many people are really going to understand this? Are, is this going to be relatable or are they yeah. just going to hear me taking a shot at my mother? Well, I think that Louis C.K. said this again. I'm horrible with where I get my quotes, but he said the more specific you are, the more general you are. You know, in terms of, so if you're running around going, men do this, women do this, it's just kind of like, oh, but as soon as you say I, for some reason, that makes it more universal. Well, no, I think, well, I don't know if I agree with that, but I, yeah. what I do agree with is that when you say I, somebody says, I'm like that too. Yes, yes. That, that's yes. possible. Yes. But, you know, just as many people say, I've never thought that way in my fucking life, but yeah. they're not your people anyway. Well, it's also weird because for me, for a long time, like when, when people find out about, you know, how my life was and how my childhood was, everyone's like, oh my God. First of all, it's like, are you in therapy? People get very worried. Well, how about was me. it? What are they responding? Well, you know, to. I think the responding to, you know, I, you know, I did, you know, uh, you know, went through my, you know, sister had a lot of drug experiences and I did, you know, very early and, you know, like what kind left home for a couple months at like 12 and was, you know, just a lot of things that like are at 12. Oh, you yeah. Left home? Yeah. Left home for and ran, you ran away. We just for went to months? Rehoboth Beach and you and your sister, me and my sister, my sister How old is older. She's a year older. So yeah. a 12 and a 13 year old? Yeah. Horror and just a lot of like grew up fast and furious, you know, but a lot of people have gone through what, this. But what but, happened on that but, oh, but a lot of times I just, <laughs> what, what a 12 and a 13 year old leave home for two just, months. I, I was this tall when I was that young. So I'm sure I didn't look that old. As you can tell, I look I've always looked 10 years older than I am. You don't look old. Um, really? The no. people the, the the blogs don't agree with you. The oh, the chat God. rooms. What do you what, No, you know what? My mom is pretty much she will go through my uh, IMDb mm-hmm. comments and send them to me and she'll go see this guy doesn't think that you wear enough lip gloss either like uh, she and she'll you know so she's brutal but another thing is that I don't and, and it's weird because I'm sure a lot of people would consider a stand-up comedian a narcissist but I don't find my life that interesting I guess or something or I don't that's why I don't like to go is that really true because I think that, I think you protected it Really, I, I, I think I, I'm trying to figure out what it is exactly because it's like the same thing. I don't like to go it's insecurity. To, I don't like I to. Guess go, so. I don't like to go to therapy because I literally get bored. I sw- I get bored about with talking. yourself. Yes, I get bored about talking about myself because it's like I have to fucking live with myself all the time, and I just get annoyed by these like obsessive thoughts about things and insecurities and and paranoia. I get annoyed. So by the time I'm I'm like I don't want to pay fifty bucks to think about the or 150 bucks to what's think the, about this shit more. What's your biggest obsession? I mean, what are they usually about? Um, pro- I I get I'm, food. I, um, f- you know what? Thank you. I'm going to take that as a compliment because I'm assuming you think I'm thin. But I, I do. Food used to be. I used to be very obsessed with food. Um, my sister um, had a, a really bad eating disorder. Is first. this sister real? You just is this just a way of you saying me? She's. Okay. <laughs> Oh, have I been saying my sister this whole time? That's why I refer to my myself. sister had a drug problem. I can show you. Uh, my sister had an eating disorder. I can my show sister. you a picture of no, her. No, I believe you. She's I... um yeah uh, she's uh you know so I did have an eating problem very young mm-hmm. and I was like you know worked as a model when I was younger. Um, like um, you did. Well, how old were you? Fit, uh, probably like thirteen to seventeen. After the two month hiatus. After the two the two with month your saga. Sister, <laughs> yes. Where you ran away. <laughs> the two month excursion. Um, but uh, but yeah. So I. I how long did you model for? Um, probably like five or six, you know, into college, but five or six years when I was a teenager. Print and, stuff? And was young. We pretty, a lot of print. Made lot some of, money? Lot, did make some good money. Spent it all on my college education. Uh, did some QVC. You put yourself through college with your modeling money? Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, I did a lot of QVC. I did some catalog stuff. Really, I did at 16 a lot of a pee in the pod maternity stuff. Oh, yeah? Yeah. A lot of just, you know, random stuff like that. And fit modeling, which is, you know, yeah, you, I know just, about that. you just sit yeah. there for or informal modeling where you just right. walk around the store and um, trying to not kill yourself. It's interesting that the fight that you do fight to be to be a woman who is attractive on stage and i know Thank i get you. i get my balls you know busted no i get i get i get busted by by you know people who claim to be like you know why does he always make uh, people feel different on a show like there's a couple of idiots that write me emails feel saying different well why would it, why does he ask a woman what's it, what is it like to be a woman doing stand up well, how is that important well because it is i think it's that's a real, every, i think that's i think that i think that people want to know that and here's another thing though you know this more than anyone i think that most stand 
stand-up women stand-ups now are really attractive right but there's but the issue with i'm talking about is there used to be a a thing that my ex used to have to deal with which is like they look at someone who's attractive and Uh think like what could their problem be that you're attractive and your uncle tried to fuck you when you were 10. I mean, uh-huh. yeah. I think that, Is that I think, why you took I the excursion? That, I think that was the excursion to my <laughs> uncle's boat. Um, <laughs> you know, I think that, 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 that um, you know, being attractive, uh, uh, you know, brings up a set of, you know, issues with yourself. You know, yeah, because people can't see way, past the more attra- it. They don't see you as a person. Completely. The more attractive someone is, usually um, the less attractive they think they are. Right. You know? And also, it's like for me... I was, I may be an attractive comedian, but I was an ugly model. So I was always, in, as a model, I was always the ugliest and the fattest. Even Not, though, didn't they say you're like unique? Even though, no, that, I was just the ugliest. And so I would word? get, I would get fired from jobs on the spot. Randolph Duke told me that my ribs were too big, so I couldn't fit into a dress. So it's like I was always the ugly girl, but just in a different echelon. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, you know. So I was- now, so now that you're, you're you're rising to the challenge. You're not writing general one line. Yeah, trying to get, but trying to sort of. But I'm trying joke. to figure out because um, I guess I just find myself so boring and my life so boring. You know, but well, so all you do is work. I do but work, I, but you do but think about things because I, like- I see your tweets and you and your observational comedy is funny. Really. Um, I, I, uh, I don't know. I, I, it's weird and this sounds so fucking gay, but I, um, I don't know. Stand up doesn't feel like work to me. I really do, you know. No, I know, but what I'm saying is that your life is limited to, like, if you're doing three sets a night and you're yeah. running around, then you're going home and you're getting up and you're, yeah. you're, you're trying to, you know, pitch projects and, yeah. and get cast and this, that, and the other thing. What yeah. do you have going on? Yeah, I do. I just sold a show to NBC yesterday. Um, you sold a show to NBC? Yeah, a TV show, which hopefully, you know, I'll be in. Who are you partnered with? I'm partnered with the Scott Stuber Company. Uh, and who's writing it? I'm writing it. Really? Yeah, yeah. I so pitched you, it yesterday. So oh, I that's beat. awesome. So yeah. you you pitched a, a a full that you're writing and creating. Yeah, yeah. And then so I was just in a deal with Comedy Central for a while. Right. They want me to do a talk show. So right. I don't know if that makes sense, but um, meeting with that next week. So we'll. So see. what's in first position? I, I want to go this one. This NBC, NBC one will be. But I want to um and. So uh, you have just, to write it. Yeah, yeah. So you're with a production company. You're going to write it alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm writing it alone, and then creator because that's I want a house. Right. Yeah, I want to get a house. And I. Um, you want to talk I'm, about what it's about? Um, sure. Yeah, yeah. No, it's very simple. It's basically like modern day Mad About You. It's about a couple who's been together for four years, and they want to stay together, but they're too afraid of marriage. So they sort of are dealing with all the prejudices that happen when you want to stay together but don't want to get married. You know, because the girl comes from a lot of divorce in her family. She's like me. I basically had a situation where I was with a guy for four years and he we got in a fight one day, had nothing to do with the fact that I went through his phone. And he uh, he said, he's like, well, why don't we just get married? And I I I almost threw like I was so I'm so terrified about the idea of marriage. Yeah. Um, And I'm working through a lot of those fears. And and so every episode is just going to be, you know, questioning a different element of what marriage is and why we have to do it and what it means. and I remember this story. This happened a long time ago. It happened a long time ago. Because we talked about it when we were in San Diego. We did talk about it in San Diego. On but the you got back together with that guy after that. Got back together with the guy after that, then broke up for good about a year ago. Yeah. And dating someone new now. Right. So, you but it basically, a comedy guy. It's basically a comedy writer. Right. Not a, I mean. not a comedian. Okay, easy. Yeah, I'm not a comedian. I'm not dating a comedian. <laughs> I am not dating Monster Brawny. <laughs> You're someone I'd tell his wife if you are. <laughs> yeah, but I'm taking the next couple off, and I just uh, wrote a movie. So I, it's actually really nice, and you might appreciate this, because I feel like uh, writing TV and writing movies yeah. is like uh, where you get to dump all your B jokes yeah. that don't get to yeah, make it into your A's. Yeah, 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 <laughs> so yeah. it's like all the same thing with Twitter. Yeah. It's like all the things that aren't A enough to go in your special find a home finally, so it wasn't all a complete waste of time. <laughs> is that Put horrible? In the shitty movie. Is that horrible that no. I'm just like, oh, thank God, a character saying this. Extent- Dude, the fact that you actually you know put them in a place where you can keep them and use them again yeah is uh, impressive it's just good to be able to have so yeah i wrote a movie and i'm gonna try to take the next couple months What's off the movie from about? the road the movie is um it let's I mean, let me just tell you what's based on it's based on the fact that my name is whitney cummings uh-huh. and there's a porn star named wendy cummings yeah and before i started uh having anything on google when you google my name yeah. a lot of porn would come up and that's the that's the movie. Ba- uh, that's what it's based on. Well, you're uh, you you seem to be a hot commodity right now. Really? Yeah. Whatever. Doing the Tonight Show Monday. Whatever. Yeah, I wonder when we're going to air this. That's going to be embarrassing. so. Might, maybe you should say like I was just on the Tonight Show. No, I don't want to plug anything. But I'm sure I'm I'm kind of just sort You've of. You've never done the Tonight Show. I did with Conan. Right. I'm doing it with Leno. Right. Is that okay? Am I going to? Are people not going to like me? No, you do whatever you can. Can you tell me how I'm perceived? 
Yeah. Because I don't think that I'm accepted by the alternative community. Well, like on this show, if if there is a bridging of the gap, I do it only because I appreciate people who are real comedians and yeah. you've worked, to, you've earned what you have, uh, you. you know, from doing the work as a stand up and writing jokes. Yeah. Uh, you know, the uh, alternative community is just a, a sort of select, insulated, somewhat um, elitist group of people. Yeah. That, you know, it, they, it, things get decided by them as a group. I mean, yeah. you know, Louis was the same way. I mean, Louis at some point, you know, actively in some respects campaigned, you know, for their appreciation. Yeah. In, in a sense that like, you know, if you look at Lucky Louie from HBO, that wasn't an alternative show in any way. Uh-uh. You know, and somehow or another they warmed to him. So you don't know how they're going to respond after or yeah. what it's going to take because yeah. they certainly don't embrace Jim Norton. They certainly don't. That's uh, true. That, you know, what what they decide is good is That's relative true. to to who deems it. I don't know wh- yeah. why or how it happens. Yeah. And now, you know, but it doesn't Zach make Galifianakis any- is a major movie star doing commercial films. It's and not about commercial. It's it's no. not about selling out. Yeah. It's just about who they think they, uh, you know, are, are relate to or who they, they, yeah. I don't even know how it happens or what the group think around yeah. it is yeah. or, or why, but it's not about selling out because they have no problem with people selling out as long as they sell out and they can still appreciate it. I don't know that the idea of selling out really applies to anything anymore. Yeah. Cause you, you know, if they're okay with the vehicle and they understand you, I mean, yeah. on some level, I think that, you know, maybe Dave Cross took a couple of hits for doing the second Chipmunks movie. You know, I think that, you, you know, there's certain people. Pat Oswald doing King of Queens. And- he does, but, but he doesn't seem to take any hits because there's two schools doesn't. of thought in terms of the people that are alternative that can draw they they are obviously real comedians and they do the job yeah yeah so like when it comes it's not right about down material to it. it's no not- no when it comes right down to it you know guys who can do the job you know can do the job and they're professional comedians yeah and you know i don't see any difference between somebody who's a professional comedian from from uh, the main or whatever the opposite of alternative is it's yeah. all one thing to me commercial but or it's very mainstream it's a fickle thing yeah it's, it's not based on any on any uh yeah. Uh, sense of it's based on a sensibility. It's not based on what people do necessarily. Yeah. Like Maria Bamford is a huge alternative comedian, and you can see that because you know she's sort of this unique thing that yeah. that is, is is special and would not really play for any audience and, and speaks a, a certain way. Yeah. Uh, that you know she's. But I get because it just I'm asking because I get bummed out thinking maybe that people don't interpret me as original or specific. Do you know well, what I mean? Well, I think that your shortcomings, you know what they are. And it seems to me that as you evolve as a comic, you're dealing with them. I mean, yeah. you, obviously something in you has said to you that, you know, I need to, you know, I need to expose more. I need to take more chances yeah, and with by my the way, stand-up. And as, 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 as polarizing as Dane Cook is, he's, you know, someone who started, you know, or he's got very famous and successful with very high energy and what a lot of people would think would be commercial mainstream. And he's just done a 180. And now he talks about, you know, suicide and his parents dying and just stands there with a microphone and doesn't do the energy stuff anymore. You know, judging people for their success or or why anybody likes him. I I don't know. It it becomes a waste of time after a while. It's just entertainment. And everybody's got about a five year shot. And and, and then eventually, you know, if you get uh, the fortunate enough to make a bunch of money in that window of opportunity, then you got to figure out how to hold on to it. You know, in in the big picture, it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't matter. And I guess it's like for me, because it's like, I think that and part of the reason why last time I was standing didn't make sense for me, because like I'm running around like, you know, I think my biggest problem maybe is that I run around and do Mill Valley. Look at you. Um, and go, what do people think of me? What do people think of me? But the, I think the, as a comedian, you can only write about what interests you and what you think is funny. But, but I think what you, I think you, and uh, maybe what interests me is a little simple and mainstream. I, you well, know, that's fine. I mean, but I think you know, I don't want to do you, jokes about this American life. No, no one wants to do jokes about you know? this American life, but this American life is a, is a cultural standard bearer yeah. for what is nerd community. You know, yeah. you're not, there's no reason you have to be, pretend to be part of nerd culture if yeah. you're not. Yeah. And, and the thing is, I think you have identified your own shortcomings is that you're self-conscious about the possibility that you are approaching, though original in, in, in your own way, you know, fairly, you know, well-trodden ground about relationships. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if, as but you that's get, also just what interests me. You know what I mean? Like, right. I just, and I, I happen to just be interested in things that other people are interested in. So I guess that makes And also, me you're mainstream. a joke writer. Yeah. I, and a lot of people who do point of view comedy, like, you know, alternative comics, yeah. don't come from the same background as you. Yeah. I mean, you're the kind of guy that, you're the kind of guy. Yes. You're the kind of woman that, you know, not unlike a tell, will just sit there and write jokes and, and just not, you know, just write joke after joke yeah, after joke yeah, after yeah. joke. Whereas, you know, an alternative approach would be like, oh, I'm going to go talk about that thing that my dog did. Yeah. So, we'll see. You know, 
know. I just talk about what haunts me and what, you know what I mean? Like, that's why for me doing stand-up doesn't feel like work because I don't sit down and go, okay, what is funny about batteries? Because I need to write battery what jokes. What do you mean what haunts you? You know, what haunts me. All you like to write jokes as puzzles, though, don't you? I mean, yeah, you, you will sit there. Yeah, it's a lot of math. Yeah, it, it is, is a lot of math. But then, but also uh, a great, because that's what writing the roast jokes and, and stuff like that. And I wrote for You're a professional comedy but writer. But that is, yeah, that is, those are, there's math to right. it. But now I think that honesty trumps good math. All right. And, well, as you, you know, take that, as you journey that, yeah. you will see how the, you know, that crew uh, responds to you. I don't think you should be concerned about it. I do, I do, I, you know, I'm not necessarily concerned, but it's just interesting, especially people, you're just such a good person to talk to about this, when you're, how, just figuring out how you're perceived. I don't and maybe know Maybe no one should worry about Look, that. Look, the alternative, they didn't like me. They barely accept me. You're like me. the guy. No, I'm not. You know, I'm not the guy. You know, I don't, you know, I'm not an ironic person. I yeah. don't have a, I don't have an ironic following. Uh-huh. I'm very raw. I'm very honest. I talk you to are. a lot of people that they like. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that, you know, I, you know, my, my mental processes reveal something that no one really talks about. And I think they find it compelling. Yeah. But, you know, they, they're not and fearless. They're, right. But they're not loyalist to that type of comedy. I yeah. mean, they'd much rather have Paul F. Tompkins or Patton. You're but, dangerous. Well, I, I just think that, like, what I try to do, you know, here is just like I am saddened that you know, there's a lot of guys, like some guys who work. Like I had a, uh, I had Dove on the show, uh-huh. I had Caparulo on the show. I, I want to hear had, the one of you and Dove. It's great, you know, yeah. because like you know, despite the fact that he annoys me and I bust his balls, you know, I know he's a bright kid, yeah, and I and I know he has an interesting way of speaking, yeah. But it's sort of like it's weird to me, yeah. And like I went to England and interviewed Stuart Lee, who I never knew, who's a genius. Wow. And it, but it's interesting to me that you have real comedians. Like I think Cap is a real comedian. Yes. And and people don't know him from the alternative side of the street. Yeah. And they may not dig him, or they yeah. may think this or that about him, but you can't deny the guy's a real deal. So yeah, it's just a. I don't know why people get like, and I understand it's sort of like you feel like it's a clique that you want yeah. to be part of. And but. it's and it's one of those things where it's like I don't know, yeah, if I have to just go hang out at La Pumel more uh, or something, but <laughs> they yeah. don't hang out there. But it is interesting just in in talking. I about think it, as but. you take chances, you, you know that you know if you, you know, it's all a matter of 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 what kind of you know, what what you do up there. Yeah, you know, and it, and it sounds like you're, you're heading in a new direction in terms of, of honesty, and that's exciting. Yeah, it is exciting. And um, congratulations on all your success. Thank you. I am soaking wet. I know. <laughs> sweaty, right? <laughs> sweaty, sweaty. Okay. Okay, that's our show, folks. I hope you enjoyed that. A little more insight into the joke machine that is Whitney Cummings. Please, folks, go to WTF Pod Shop. Pick up one of the premium episodes. The last one, the Parade of Jews, or whatever we called it, the Calvacate of Jews. They're all really funny, uh, and I'm glad that the, those of you who did pick them up are enjoying them. Also, new shirts are coming. New shirts are coming. And I've got new stickers. And I'll be in New York at Comics. Next week, September 15th, that's Wednesday, at Comics in New York, two live WTFs, 7.30 and 9.30. The first show, we're titling The Nerdier Show. That's uh, Jesse Klein, Michael Showalter, Maeve Higgins, uh, Glenn Wool, and maybe David Cross. The second show, 9.30, that's going to be Bobby Kelly, Kurt Metzger, Joe DeRosa, Pete Corielli, and Dave Attell. That's the Dirtier Show. Live WTF at Comics in New York. Wednesday, September 15th, 7.30 to 9.30. Go to Comics NY. That's Comics with an X, NY.com for tickets and information. And hey, if you can't make it to the Comics Show, I will be at Union Hall in Brooklyn on Tuesday, September 14th for two shows. Go to UnionHallNY.com for information. Those are usually pretty good shows. I've got no coffee. Go to justcoffee.coop or go to wtfpod.com for justcoffee.coop. <laughs>